welcome to Nightline. We welcome you here tonight. We're so glad you've tuned in. It makes us feel good when you tune in. Um, and we've got a great show lined up for you tonight. I am Mary Sloan, along with my daughter, Tony Suchka, and she's actually my biological daughter. Uh, someone thought she was my spiritual daughter, but she's that too, though, aren't you, Tony? We have a lot of good time talking yes. about spiritual things, don't we? We do, we do. <laughs> Our topic tonight is on strength healing, and uh, that's the name of Tony's company, actually. And we're going to be uh, interviewing some girls that's going to talk us how to uh, talk to us about how to walk in wholeness of health, not just your body. Not just your soul, but also your spirit, your overall body. Isn't right. It? All of it together is very important. Yes. What kind of scripture we got with that tonight? Well, tonight, um, the scripture is 1 Corinthians 10, 33. And it says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all Amen. for the glory of God. That's good. Yes. I thought that was obviously fitting because, you know, we do everything that we do. It's to live a healthy lifestyle, we want to do it all honoring God and especially honoring ourselves and our bodies in that way. Yes, and knowing what program we have tonight, what a good program. We really want a lot of viewers to tune in, and we invite you to go to Facebook. Uh, you can go to WGGS TV on Facebook, or you can go to Nightline Live with Mary and Tony. You can get Facebook on either page there, and you can go to YouTube and subscribe to WGGS TV there, or you can go to their website, and uh, you can get it live there. So there's all kind of ways, and how many ways? 16 ways. <laughs> 16 ways 16 to watch ways TV 16. ways to watch TV 16. So if you start watching it tonight, and it seems like a good program to you, you know what you do? You want to share it, don't you? That's right. You want others to know about it. We got some great testimony going on tonight that a lot of people need to hear about. Right. Amen. Who got, is our guest? Well, we've got great guests. Um, two ladies um, from Living in Wholeness. They have a YouTube online show, and it's Jacqueline Rodriguez and Keisha Delata. And I've known these beautiful women from Hope Church in Spartanburg. So that's um, Pastor I, who? Pastor Tony Cribb <laughs> Tony and Cribb. Rich Butler. <laughs> yes. So um, I'm at Hope Church in Simpsonville. So I am just honored to have those two women with us here tonight. And then um, in our last half hour, I'm going to be sharing uh, myself, just kind of giving some tips and just some encouragement of how to live a healthy lifestyle. And we also have some great music guests tonight. We've got Kaylee and Erica Tuttle that are going to be singing and also the Set Free Praise and Worship team. So we've got a great show in store for you tonight. And I wanted to talk about some things, you know, health is more than just food and weight. Right. Good. I like that part. <laughs> that is the good part. You know, spiritual health is important as well. And we have to have our mind and our spirit right. in a healthy place um, right. so that we can be open to receive all that God yeah. has for us. And that's kind of what this show is is going to be focusing on tonight. Sometimes we've done um, focusing on the physical aspect, but this Strength Healing Healthy Living show is it's going to focus on all areas of our health. Um and every aspect of our life has the potential to honor God yes. in everything that mm -hmm. we do. I tell my son that sometimes, you know, even when you make your bed, make it, just do everything that you do 100% to honor the Lord so that I can flip a quarter off of it. <laughs> but um, one thing I wanted to ask you, Mom, is what's something that you do regularly that you feel honors your body and improves your health, whether it be spirit, mind, <laughs> body, whatever. Well, Tony, as you know, I don't do as good as you. Uh, I wish I could. I uh, wish I, w I should, but uh, I uh, just running up and down the stairs some, or going up and down the stairs, or that going works. out and um, cleaning the pool. That's definitely okay. exercise. <laughs> okay, and uh, putting dishes in the dishwasher. Um, <laughs> I'm stretching it, maybe. <laughs> Walk into the car to drive somewhere. Does that work? Hey, as long as you're moving. <laughs> That's right. As long as you're moving, right? Well, I do move a lot. I definitely do move a lot. I probably don't get the right kind of exercise all the time that I should, but I do move a lot. But when uh, 
we were talking about the whole the whole man, you know, there's this body, spirit, and soul. And I was just thinking about the spirit man myself. I love that mm -hmm. part, the spirit man too. But you know, we're saved through accepting Jesus as our personal Savior and applying that blood to our heart, believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead and you know, we're saved. But you know, and then we have that grace applied to us, but grace empowers us also to live an overcoming life and to be productive and to do what God has placed us on this earth to do. And the only way we can really do that is to renew our minds daily. And that's taking a bath in the word. Mm -hmm. So we have to do that too. And, you know, I always go back to the tabernacle. There were, there were uh, taught on it many years and there were two altars out in the outer court. And the first one was where they would slay the, the animals the blood sacrifice, but there was another altar, the brazen laver, and that's where they would wash daily. And once you kill that lamb, you didn't go back and kill the lamb again, but you went and washed all the time at that brazen laver. And um, we must wash ourselves daily in order to uh, live the life that we want to be productive in. And it's the washing of the water by the word. I say we're on a journey and we need a map to help us get there. And uh, we have our cell phones, don't we, for our GPS, but the Bible is our spiritual GPS, God's power system. And as long as we've got that, you know, we're going to make it. Philippians 2 and 5 says, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. So we know in order to do that, we've got to study the word. But one thing I wanted to bring out, and I thought this was so good uh, to read, it just stood out to me. It, talking about bathing ourselves in the Word of God. The Lord's words contain the element of water, which simply speak in His spirit and life. The Lord said, the words which I've spoken to you are spirit and are life. In other words, the Lord's words have cleansing power. The water is here not for supplying, but for cleansing. We have water that supplies our thirst, but this is for cleansing. It's for the cleansing and washing of the church. What is washed away are the spots and the wrinkles. Wrinkles are related to oldness in our, in our oldness or within us. You must let the water in the word, that is the spirit and the life in the word, do a metabolic work in your organic being by adding new life elements into you to replace old elements. This is a metabolic process and a discharging, something new being supplied to us and something old is being discharged from us. So we need, it's being a, like eliminated from us. We need to build out spiritual metabolism every day through the washing of the word. So even with exercising, Tony, literal exercising, it's about the metabolism, isn't it? And we can find that even on the spiritual side when we fill ourselves with that word. Yes, if we're going to wash, you know, if we're going to take showers, mm -hmm. we have to wash our body. If we're going to um, give our body strength yes. and we want to try and keep our metabolism in a healthy place, then we also want to do the same with our spirit. We want to wash in the word daily so that our spirit can be renewed daily and so that they can grow. That's a good um, analogy with the metabolism and growing your uh, spirit as well. I had never thought about the metabolism metabolism that way, but there's a spiritual yeah, metabolism. There is. There. <laughs> you know, physically, I try to exercise at least five days a week. It's, I mean, it may sound silly, but it's a passion of mine and I enjoy a good, hard workout. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I got that one from, but, um, but anyway, I try nice. to do that to honor my body. And I also focus on eating healthy and trying to keep a clean diet to live a healthier lifestyle so that I can encourage others to do so. And by the way, I'm just teasing when I say those things to my mom. <laughs> oh, I'm a um, big girl. I can tell yeah, you. Yeah, she's, she's the biggest one that, that teases, so I get it from her. <laughs> but, um, you know, I just, for my spirit, I love to spend time in worship. Um, and that can be anywhere. It can be in my car. It can be sitting at my computer. It can be in the shower. It can be when I'm on a run. Um, just yesterday, I was on a run, and I had some music in that I just 
th it was speaking to my spirit and next thing you know, and I don't even care, just have my hands out like this. I probably look crazy running with my hands out, but it's just a time to where I feel like that the Lord fills me up and it's a time to be able to um, allow my spirit to be fed and have yes. walk out that with my spirit because life is busy. You know, we set aside time to in all areas of our life for other things. Um, so we have to set aside time to keep ourselves he healthy in all aspects of our life. And um, so that means physically, spiritually, mentally. I mean, even mentally, sometimes we have to disconnect and go to lunch with some friends. Laughter is good for the soul and, and healthy for you. So there's so many ways right. we can look at um, feeding our bodies and both physical, uh, spiritual, yes. and mental. And today, that's what our guests are going to be speaking on, is being healthy spiritually and mentally um, and physically as well. So I'm excited to have them on and just share a little bit about what they're doing. But there's just so many things that you can do. You may be in a place of just not knowing what to do. But I just encourage you to ask the Lord to say, show Amen. me the next steps. Show me what you want me to do because I know that if you'll ask, he'll speak to you. His word says, when you call out to me, I will listen yes. and he will let you know what your next steps are. I feel like that he is so um, graceful and loves us so much to introduce what we can handle at the time in our lives. So I know that's something he would love to do for you as well. So call a friend, text somebody, get on Facebook, Nightline Live with Mary and Tony, share the live program so yes. that your friends can watch it. It's going to be a good night. But first, <laughs> my mom and I are going to share a strength healing recipe segment with you. And if you don't know how to make some good guacamole, you're going to find out right now. Hi, I'm Tony Suchka with Strength Healing, and this is my mom, Mary Hi. Sloan. I'm a professional trainer and a weight management specialist that focuses on good nutrition. And today we are going to make guacamole. Wow. I have learned that not everybody knows how to make homemade guacamole. And the main ingredient in guacamole is avocados. Yes. And avocados are so good for you. They're actually a fruit. I think some people think of them as a vegetable, but they're actually a fruit. And they are a healthy fat. So it's very important to get these in your system. They have so many benefits. They yes. help with your skin to maintain healthy skin, good eyesight. They help lower cholesterol and your triglycerides. Yes. And they also reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease. Well, you know what? I, I usually try to keep two or three. You don't need to buy a whole lot at one time because, you know, they ripen pretty quickly, don't they? They do. So I try to keep them on the counter, and it just, you can just... you. You can just put tomato in them or lime juice or just whatever, you know, and all of a sudden, you, within just a few minutes, you've got a great snack that's very healthy for you. And I have a couple tricks. Sometimes when you do buy avocados, and if they're super hard, sometimes it will take several days to ripen. So what I'll do is I'll actually put them in my bread box, which is a very dark place for mm -hmm. about one to two days, and they'll soften up pretty quickly. Or another trick is you can put them in a brown paper bag with an mm -hmm. apple, and the, as the acidity from the apple will help that avocado ripen within a day. And I didn't know about the apple. Well, that's a little <laughs> tip from Strength Healing. And I so. like your, your apron, too. Thank you. That's so cute. Thank you. I love to sparkle. <laughs> so one of the things I did want to show you before we get started is how to actually cut an avocado. So you want to make sure that you have a towel in your hand because didn't, uh, isn't, this one of the main ER visits? Yeah, I actually just heard a couple of weeks ago on the news that the number one visit to the ER is because of people cutting avocados and they go for the seed, but they miss the seed and they'll stab the knife in their hand. So you do not want to do that. <laughs> so I just cut it right in half and I'm going to pull it apart. It'll come apart here. Mm -hmm. So this is a pretty soft, ripe avocado. It's got a pretty large seed. So I'm going to have this towel in my hand. <laughs> and I'm going to stab that seed with the knife. You don't need a super big knife. And it's going to pop out 
Oh, like okay. So. so you don't go forward with that knife. You go to the no, side. No, you just take it to <laughs> well, the I side. Well, I learned something today, Tony. I've been doing it the other way. <laughs> oh, no. We don't want to stab it. We just want to go down. <laughs> Maybe that's why I've been afraid and, you know, of get and you don't need a huge knife. Just something sharp mm -hmm. enough that will kind of go into that seed. Right. So then we can take a spoon mm -hmm. and we can just scoop out the inside. Right. This is some we've already opened. These avocados. Mm -hmm. And what I do is I use about three ripe avocados for my guacamole. And you know, there's so many ways that you can make guacamole. I like mine spicy, so this recipe that we're doing today is going to be a spicy guacamole. Now, some of the ways I love to eat guacamole is on top of chicken mm -hmm. or salmon, or sometimes I'll actually just put it on the side of my plate. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a healthy fat and you need to make sure at every meal that you're eating a healthy fat. So at every meal you need fat, fiber, and protein. And that we will don't get you... chocolate in this, do we? No, not today, <laughs> no chocolate. So I'll kind of just smash those up a little bit, but you don't need to do it too much because the more that we add other ingredients and stir it together, mm -hmm. it will start to mash together more and more. You want it a little chunky, don't you? I do. I like my now, My daughter taught me that kind to of make it. Chunks in it. Yeah. And I also use guacamole as a substitute <laughs> for loud. mayonnaise. So cilantro. it's great on a sandwich. So three avocados and a half a cup of cilantro. So we'll go ahead and pour the cilantro in there. And then we have a half a cup, half of a cup of red, red onion. onions chopped. And then I put one seeded chopped jalapeno. We'll pour that in. Mm -hmm. And then we also have one half cup of diced tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Now I don't get to use a lot of tomatoes at home because my husband doesn't really enjoy tomatoes. So I don't typically put them in there, but I do love tomatoes. Now we're also gonna take the juice of one lime. Now this is what makes it good. Yes, the lime and the salt will marry all these flavors. And the lime also helps keep your avocados from browning. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna use my handy tool here that's gonna get all of the lime juice out and it will definitely give you the mm -hmm. best bang for your buck with that lime. And I'll squeeze that. If you don't have one of these juicers, you have to get one of these yes. for your kitchen. They are awesome to have, so handy. How Keeps much your hands salt clean. do we need? So, I wouldn't pour that much salt. Yeah. I would actually take it, uh -huh. and I just like to sprinkle it around. Mm. Now, some people like their uh, food a little bit saltier than others. Mm -hmm. So I'll take all those ingredients, and I'm going to just continue to stir those up. Now, one thing that I like to do in my guacamole is add a little extra spice on top of the jalapeno. So what I'll do is I'll take this olive oil, this olive oil is actually, we have the owner, uh, Sandy Byrne, on mm -hmm. with us on one of our programs, our right. Healthy Living Shows. And this is harissa. So this is a spicy oil. So what I'm going to do is just drizzle a little bit of this spicy oil on top. So that's another healthy fat that we're getting mm -hmm. along with that avocado. Mm. And we're going to stir that up. Looks good. And it's so pretty. And again, you can put this on a burger. Um, again, use it on a sandwich in place of mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. So, and it's pretty. Yeah, I love it. it. Is. Now, there are several ways. I've got some already made here. And you can eat this. These are black bean chips. And these are just black beans mm -hmm. and um, a little bit of sunflower oil, sea salt. And these are plantain chips. Mm -hmm. So, there's nothing added in this. So I like to try, this is just plantains and a little bit of oil and right. salt. So this is a great option to use, a healthier option than just a bag of tortilla chips. So mm, why great. don't you try one of those chips? These? You're going to try the plantain? Plantain. Yep. Okay. And tell me what you think. Mm -hmm. Very good, right? you got to try it. So this is a great way to incorporate a healthy fat into your diet. So for more recipes like this and tips, you can go to my website at strengthhealing.com and subscribe to my newsletter.
Well, Tony, it was fun doing that guacamole recipe, wasn't it? Yes, we had a good time doing that. <laughs> yes, we did. Did you learn anything new from that? Uh, I learned that that's a healthy fat. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I, I remember years ago, I was telling somebody recently about how we now saute in olive oil, and they said, well, growing up, we used that good old lard to saute in. <laughs> Not anymore. We're, we're moving right. on up, right? Yes, we're learning. <laughs> well, I wanted to introduce our guest tonight. I am excited to have Jacqueline Rodriguez, and I yes. wanted to tell you a little bit about her before we get started in the interview with her. Um, just a little bit of background on her. Jacqueline suffered years of abuse and was raped at a young age. Due to the unforgiveness that was in her heart, she was unable to find peace or success. Once being saved, she found the freedom to live victoriously and applying God's word to her life. God allowed her to move forward by using her past to help others find peace and success yes. that they deserve. Jacqueline has been in the ministry and became the assistant director of the Word of God Counseling School and became part of the board of directors of Word of God Counseling Center. Currently, God has opened the door to become host of Living in Wholeness, an online show. The heart of this ministry is to inform people about the spiritual, physical, and mental consequences of being unhealthy. <laughs> so welcome, Jacqueline. This yeah. is our Healthy Living Show, yes. and we're just so glad that you're on it. Yes, I'm excited. So obviously, you know, we talk about on these programs a lot of things that um, pertain to healthy living, but there's more than just the physical aspect of healthy living. There's yes. a mental and a spiritual aspect of it. So tell us a little bit about Living in Wholeness Ministry and uh, why you got started with that. Well, Living in Wholeness is a ministry really where you have to be ready to examine your own DNA. We have to be prepared to examine every part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know how we get DNA from both our parents? Mm -hmm. All of it, when we grew up, is not all good. And we have to be prepared to face those things. This show gives you the opportunity to examine those different parts. We talk about different topics and different situations that we go through as we grow up. So it allows you to develop that area in your life and allow the Lord to come into those areas because I think unhealthiness comes from not allowing God to enter a particular area of your life because you just don't want to go there. Right. I love the name of it, by the way, Living in Wholeness. Right. Yes. Um, and that is so true that a lot of times we'll excel in different mm -hmm. areas of our life, but we have you know roots that we don't want to pull up and deal with. Yes. And it has to you have to talk through it and allow the Lord to deliver you from that. Yes. Now, how does living in wholeness help someone with the calling on their life? Well, to really be fully in your calling, you have to deal with those areas. You have to walk whole. And to walk whole is to say, Lord, I allow you to come into any area of my life and deal with me. So what we're doing is we're giving you the opportunity to deal with those areas and showing you how. And, and that it's okay that you can overcome that, that there's nothing in your life that God cannot heal. And there's nothing in your past that God cannot heal. Mm -hmm. I mean, I went through rape. I went through being molested for years. Anybody would say, how could you even forgive those people? But you know what? The God that we serve is a God that forgives. Mm -hmm. How could I not forgive those people would be the question. If God forgave me, how can I not forgive another? I have to be the living example of Christ here on earth. And walking in that unforgiveness only holds mm -hmm. you back from being right. all that God's called you to be. Absolutely, because you imprison yourself. Right. You know, you, we always blame the rapist or the molester or the one that did you wrong. No, you imprison yourself by saying, you owe me and mm -hmm. you're going to have to pay me back. You know, I've heard that when you hold unforgiveness that you carry around that dead body, yes. like a dead body on your back. Yes. And it just stays with you. you know, I remember Tammy Faye telling that story about uh, how she had to forgive all those because it was like carrying around a dead weight. Yes. Wouldn't you agree? I, I, I agree 100%. And not only during their forgiveness process, people don't realize that it's not a one-step process. You would say, well, I forgive him from molesting me. 
well, what happened during that? What's the trauma you went through that? What's the pain? What's the memory you have? What's the smell that you smelled mm. during the process? I forgave mm. every part of it mm. because I didn't want anything to control me because mm -hmm. the brain works that way. The brain records the smell, the brain mm -hmm. records the emotion, the brain records so many things. So that means that we have to deal with every part of it. Right. That's why so many people say, well, I thought I forgave. Mm -hmm. The question is, did you really forgive every area of that situation? Right. Well, you know, even good. the cracking of a door. Yeah. I remember I had mm -hmm. to go through that to, to forgive the sound of the cracking of the door, the ink. Oh, yes. You know, because that would freak me out. And I haven't really thought about the smell. Just a little smell could bring you back to an incident that happened that the devil would try to use mm -hmm. and, and just take you back. Well, you Absolutely. can think about even just pertaining to smell of when you're pregnant and you get sick and you taste something or you smell something, you don't want it anymore. Yeah. So I can't imagine a sound, a smell, a thought yes. during such a um, time in your life that you feel like you were being beat up, you know, and yes. the enemy throwing that back out to you that oh, you're not over that. Yes. You know, and trying, him trying to have you believe that lie. Yes. So that's great. Yeah. And think about it. If it's good for the good things, imagine for the bad. Because have you ever smelled cookie and you'd be like, oh, yes, that smells like mama's cookies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, it's the same thing. When you take a smell, you'd be like, oh, uh -huh. I don't like that smell. Uh -huh. Yeah. And there's, because there's something inside of you. Living in wholeness allows you to, and teaches you to examine those things and deal with those things. Lord, what's inside of me that I'm not liking it? Why am I not liking it? And allowing the Holy Spirit and the Lord to reveal that to you so that you can forgive yes. and you can be free from that. Right. Well, you know, I am so proud of my daughter, Tony. Now, she's my real daughter. Yes, my I, I found daughter. out today. <laughs> she thought she might be my spiritual daughter. She wasn't sure, but she <laughs> is my biological daughter. Uh, and I'm so proud of her with her strength healing uh, that she has set up. And she, when I, when I grow up, I want to be like her. Okay. <laughs> I don't have all that together just right, but Tony does. She's trying to spread a great message just like you. Yes. And uh, what message are you trying to spread through the living in wholeness? Well, health is about everything, body, soul, and spirit. So living in wholeness talks about all the areas, even strength, how exercise is important, how emotion, to deal with your emotions are very important, just like we just talked about that forgiveness uh, is important because that's part of your emotional uh, process. Uh, your soul, we need to commune with God, the importance of you having relationship with God. You know, we would, some people say, well, my day is so busy. And I have to tell you, my day is extremely busy. But your communion with God is so much more important. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just those 10, 15, 20 minutes, we're not saying take an hour, two hours, three hours. Mm -hmm. It's taking the time so that God can speak to you because he's wanting to speak to us. And everybody's life is different in that season. Like yes. some people may be in a season to where yes. they can spend an hour or two hours. And then I feel like that makes others that aren't in that season, the enemy wants to use that to make them feel like you didn't spend enough time. You're not spiritual but enough. you <laughs> can spend whatever time that you have in even pockets. Yes. of allowing the Lord to just minister to you and you loving on Him. Absolutely. Do it in the car. I mean, I used to drive to Greenville for an hour. Do it in the car. In mm -hmm. the car, you, yes. you can worship in the car. You can speak to the Lord in the car. Um, do it, you know, whenever you have that opportunity. Do it, do it during your lunch break. Right. Just so many areas that we... So living in wholeness is about the whole body. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of... Uh, you have metabolism for your natural body, but there's also spiritual metabolism. Absolutely. Yes. And what's how, how do we activate it? The, there's only one way. The washing of the water by the Word. Yes, by the Word of God. <laughs> Amen. So we have to at least take time in the Word. Well, we all want to live an abundant life that God has promised. And how can living in wholeness help us do that? <sighs> Ultimately, is healing, and, and I know you do healing ministry, uh, and through healing ministry, uh, I believe that as you get healed, that abundance life comes because you walk in more freedom, and in the more freedom that you walk in, then you can walk in the truth of God. Now, the word says the truth shall set us free. 
Mm -hmm. So the truth of God in us will allow us to walk in his abundance. God has so much for us, but how do we get to know what he has for us? By getting in the word, mm -hmm. by staying healthy mm -hmm. emotionally mm -hmm. and spiritually. So it all comes down to that it's really, it. at the end, you will have the abundant life God promised you if you walk the process through and deal with every Amen. area of your life. That's good. Well, what are some of the topics that you'll be discussing on the program and how people can connect with living and wholeness? Well, some of the topics like when God is silent, what do we do when God is silent? We're always, you know, confused. Is God here? Is he, is he with me? Is he guiding me? Is he directing me? So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the male perspective, the identity, the origin of, of the man as well. We'll talk about the female mm -hmm. perspective as well. Also talking about the identity, the importance of the identity. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll talk about diversity, how God was a diverse God mm -hmm. and how we should be a diverse people. He created us and he created us diverse. Mm -hmm. So there's just so many different topics that uh, just deals with just so many areas of our lives. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, how can viewers connect with you? Oh, definitely. Living in wholeness dot life. And it's a special it ending strange. on that. So it's living in wholeness dot life, not dot com, but dot life. I like that. <laughs> yeah. It's a little twist. Do they have a dot life now? They do. They do. They do. They do. Wonderful. I, I think it's that. exciting. Yes. You know, so. I do like that. Well, I've loved hearing about this and your ministry and what you're doing. I know that we're going to have Keisha yes. join us as well in the next segment. So yes. we've enjoyed it. If you're just joining us, we have Jacqueline Rodriguez and we're talking about living in wholeness. But right now we're going to go to a song by Kaylee and Erica called In the River. Jesus, no one like you, no, no, none beside you, no, no. Hey, there is a river where goodness flows. There is a fountain and it drowns our rows. There is an ocean, oh, it's deeper than fear. The tide is rising, rising. There is a current, it's stirring deep inside. Overflowing from the heart of God, the flood of heaven, it's crashing over us. The tide is rising, rising. Come on, sing, verse it. Say, bursting, bursting up from the ground. Oh, we feel it now. Bursting, bursting up from the ground. Oh, we feel it now. Come alive in the river. Hey, we come alive in the river. Hey, we come alive in the river. There is a current. There is a current. It's stirring deep inside. It's overflowing. Oh, from the heart of God, the flood of heaven. It's crashing over us. The tide is rising, rising. Say. streets yeah spring up spring up a well spring up a well spring up a well in me we come alive say we come alive in the river we come alive in the river we come alive in the river we come alive
situation Jesus you are the forever king we bless your name tonight Jesus thank you Lord thank you guys I love hearing Kaylee and Erica sing and that's one of I would say that's one of my favorite worship songs when we do that in church I, I let out a big whoo I love to dance around to that one a little bit, so oh. I love to listen to it in the car, so it's one of my favorites. That's great. Um, if you're just joining us, this is our uh, Healthy Living Show, our Strength Healing Healthy Living Show, and we're talking about uh, healthy living in all aspects of your life tonight, not just the physical, but the mental and the spiritual as well. And I have another guest here tonight. We spoke with Jacqueline Rodriguez, and we have her sidekick with us tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Keisha Delada, is that how yes, you pronounce it? Okay. Right. Um, I wanted to give a little bit of a background on Keisha, just so you'll know um, what her history is and how she's able to uh, minister alongside of Jacqueline with Living yes. in Wholeness. After experiencing many traumas in her life, sexual and physical ab abuse, an eating disorder, teenage pregnancy, anxiety, and depression, it left her living a life rooted in fear, shame, and rejection. By the grace of God, she managed to come out of many things, and it left her with a hunger to be whole in Him. Through serving full-time in ministry and volunteering, Keisha has had the privilege of ministering to men and women for over 15 years. Yeah. She has a passion to see the body of Christ fulfilled its destiny. She's been married to her high school sweetheart for 23 years and has two beautiful children, Sierra and Andrew. <laughs> Welcome. Yes. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. <laughs> so I know, Keisha, um, these beautiful ladies actually go to Hope Church in Spartanburg. Pastor who? Uh, Pastor uh, Tony Cribb and Rich Butler. And yeah. he says he watches us sometimes. They both, they both claim <laughs> they to. <laughs> so. <laughs> but I got connected with Keisha when we um, had our launch for yes. Hope Simpsonville and mm -hmm. got to know you a little bit through that. Yes. Um, and then was able to get to know you as we were planning some things with the church. So, yeah. mm -hmm. so glad that you're both here. Let's just dig right into this. Um, mm -hmm. How did the two of you guys meet um, and start working together in this? Well, I met Jackie probably about 13, 14 years ago um, at church, actually. Um, we began to talk on Sunday mornings, but we really got to know each other um, a couple of years back, probably five years ago, mm -hmm. when the church started a ministry called Freedom's Ministry. Yes. Um, that's a ministry of the church that I started to oversee. Mm -hmm. And Jackie, I know she had a history, you know, in inner healing. Um, so I went to Jackie, approached her about being the director over that ministry and helping to build a team, put a team together um, so we can just minister healing to right. those in the church. Um, and so getting to know each other in a more intimate yes. space, then you learned more about that you yes. had a lot in common yeah. with your yes. history and your Absolutely. past. Absolutely. When you get us together now, we just can't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Are so, y'all women? We're all women. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so how did you decide to work together in the living and wholeness? Mm -hmm. Well, um, actually, Melvin and Jackie, her husband, they approached my husband, Ryan, to be a host on it. They wanted to bring a male in mm -hmm. for the third season. And my husband said, well, I really don't think, you know, I'm that TV personality. Um, so Jackie said, well, Keisha, would you like to do it? And I thought, well, I've never thought about, you know, doing this. Mm -hmm. Sure, let me go ahead and try. You know, when God brings an opportunity, that's what we said. step out. <laughs> <laughs> and she's a natural. <laughs> she sure yeah. is. I, and I just enjoy it. I love it. I have never thought about, you know, doing a program on a, you know, TV, you know, being recorded. But I absolutely love and enjoy it. 
Of course, I love just sitting around and mm -hmm. talking about the Word of God and what's you know mm -hmm. He's doing in everyone's life, and um, we just discuss so many different topics that it causes you to study. You know, number one, exactly. mm -hmm. and get into the Word because you need to know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yes. So it's it's taken me deeper mm -hmm. in my relationship with the Lord, but. I just love ministering to others and teaching truth, so that's I really great. enjoy it. You're speaking our language with this. <laughs> yes. like, that's what it's, this, you know, being able to host together on this program yes. has allowed us to really dig deeper in the Word in yes. different subjects and topics. Yeah, so that's, that's it that's pulls great. on you in a different way mm -hmm. because you have to have something to minister that's, to get that's out. That's right. That's yeah. right. And you know, you don't learn it overnight. Absolutely. That's exactly you right. learn it daily, weekly, monthly, mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit just brings it back to you when you need it, doesn't Absolutely it? Absolutely mm -hmm. does. What is the message that you're trying to spread together? I'd say with living in wholeness, it's the whole person being healed. You know, I we're, like that. we're three wholeness. parts. Wholeness. You know, you can be healed and not be completely be whole. Absolutely. We want wholeness. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. But we're, you know, three parts in our being. You know, we are spirit. We're spirit beings, but we have a soul and we live mm -hmm. in a body. You know, the Lord wants all three healed. He wants all three whole. You are a complete person mm -hmm. and He wants you whole. If one is out of balance, if one is lacking, then you're out of balance and you yes. feel that in every area. So I think with living in wholeness, it's yeah. just ministering to the whole person and that's what I like. Well, I'm sure you needed it just like the rest of it because you've mm. experienced a lot in your life, like abuse yeah. and eating disorder mm -hmm. and teenage pregnancy, anxiety, depression. And how did you overcome that with your walk with Christ? Um, it was all the Lord. I had my daughter um, when I was 18, when I turned 18, I was pregnant at 17, my, actually my senior year in high school. Um, I was pregnant, my BC days, before Christ days, <laughs> and so I had my daughter, and after I had her, I started bulimia, making myself throw up, you know, an 18-year-old girl trying to lose weight, mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. I started experiencing that. Um, mm -hmm. Fast forward a lot of years, um, it was probably around 2009, I was working um, at another um, with another company and I was just working so many hours I was exhausted and I developed um, high blood pressure from doing that just stretching my body to mm -hmm. the max and my doctor put me on blood pressure medicine well the first medicine that he gave me was kind of too strong for me and I began to have anxiety attacks panic attacks I didn't at the time know what they were at first mm -hmm. and then I realized what they were um, but it just threw me overboard. I'd never experienced anything like that in my life. And I lived probably about three years um, with severe anxiety and panic attacks and then depression on the other side of that. Yeah. Um, so by the grace of God, I got off blood pressure medicine, taking mm -hmm. care yeah. of my body, reducing stress levels. And, you know, he just brought me out of the depression Amen. that I was walking through. Well, you know, these are the kind of testimonies we like to have on YouTube, to have mm -hmm. on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, if you're, on, if you're on Facebook now watching, why don't you share this with somebody else so that they can uh, realize what living in wholeness mm -hmm. is all about. You don't have to live in shame, do you? No, you no. don't. The enemy wants shame on you. Yes. As long as he can keep you under shame, mm -hmm. he's got you. Mm -hmm. But we rise above that, don't we? Yes. Absolutely. Many times <laughs> as believers, we think you're a Christian. Why are you walking through anxiety? Why are you, how can you be depressed? Mm -hmm. You know, you have Christ, you know, as your Lord, but we all, you know, walk through valleys. We're not always mm -hmm. on mountaintops. We don't live there. You know, you can't live on the mountain all the time. You do have to walk down in valleys too. Um, but what I've just realized walking through my testimony, there is fruit in the valley. Mm -hmm. The valley can be very, very fruitful, mm -hmm. you know, in that place with him. And he'll bring you back up on the mountaintop. Yes. Amen. Now, what do you feel would be a topic that you would be most passionate about discussing? Mm -hmm. My favorite topic is leadership. I'm a big leadership junkie. <laughs> I love leadership because leadership doesn't just deal with you leading other people, but it first starts with you leading yourself well. You have to learn to lead yourself well before you can ever lead anyone else well. So I would say leadership 
and leadership causes you to really dig inside of yourself and pulls you up to another level. So you have to deal, you know, with those soul issues, mm -hmm. you know, with those emotional issues. You have to deal with your will and make yourself put disciplines mm -hmm. in place in your life, you know. Mm -hmm. So it deals with the whole person. Yeah, grace empowers us to be all mm -hmm. we can be. Yes. We don't say we're under grace and sit down and do nothing. <laughs> you know, it empowers yeah. us to live a productive journey here. Mm -hmm. well, where do you see living in wholeness going mm -hmm. in the future? Mm -hmm. I see podcasts. I see different events. I see um, conferences, different, you know, TV, you know, events, cable channels. I just, you know, the sky's the limit with the Lord. Amen. And the conferences and so forth. And we so, have you're not planning to let Keisha go after the third season, right? <laughs> no, she's not going anywhere. We're actually trying to, uh, we're, we're wanting to plan a conference, uh, hopefully in the near future. Mm -hmm. uh, right now we have some great sponsors. We got Third Day Production that sponsors us and does mm -hmm. all the recording for the shows. We're hoping to get a few more sponsors so like that we can start producing the conferences as well. Because mm -hmm. I think it's important to have hands on as well. Mm -hmm. uh, TV shows are great. But conferences are also great because mm -hmm. you have the opportunity to minister right mm -hmm. there at a, exactly. for a longer period of time. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I feel like is um, a setting like this is great to share and encourage, but then you get in a setting like that and that's where you can dig deeper. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now on your show, do you do like, do you do live calls or anything like that? Or do you just take different topics and go deeper with them? Mm -hmm. We take the different topics and go deeper with them, but that's not to say that in the future we won't take live calls because right now everything is pre-recorded, mm -hmm. uh, but we're aiming for that in the future. So how can Absolutely. people get in touch with you? At our website at livingandholiness.live and we encourage them just to go there to view the show and you'll have links to all of our social media pages from there and where you can watch the show and the shows are only actually 10 to 12 minutes long you know so they're not 30 minutes 40 minutes long they're 10 to 12 minutes we mm -hmm. may run into some 15 sometimes but they can easily just take time out of their day That's sit good. down open the word you know along with us and just dig it out just a great way to mm -hmm. be encouraged in the That's middle right. of your day just just like yes. you were saying, Absolutely. it doesn't have to be an hour or two hours, right. but mm -hmm. it can be pockets here and there, mm -hmm. and the Lord using you guys to encourage mm -hmm. one another, and then that encourages them. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So I love what you're doing. Thank we you so much. We wish you all the best. Yes, thank, thank you. We're going to be praying that God will just bless you uh, mm -hmm. above anything you could ever imagine. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you for yes. having us. Thank, thank you so you. much. And we've got a song us. we're going to do now by Kaylee and Erica Tuttle, and it's entitled Jesus.
Tuttle. For many of you that don't know, uh, Judy Jacobs is their mother. A lot of people know Judy Jacobs. She's had some big number one songs. What a great singer. What a great anointing, I'm telling you. And their daddy is uh, Jamie Tuttle. And we've known their family for many, many, many years. And it's just such a privilege to even have them. They're with so us, talented. Oh, my goodness. And carry um, such a great yes. anointing when yes. they sing. I love, um, I have their CD and just sometimes turn it on mm -hmm. while I'm cooking and have a little praise and worship time in my kitchen <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> while I'm cooking too. our healthy meals. <laughs> what you been cooking lately? <laughs> oh, you know, one of my favorite uh, dinners to cook is salmon, and I have never liked salmon ever. Um, Didn't I just give you some? You did, you did. <laughs> but I got some at the fresh market, and I was like, you know, I don't like salmon. How do you cook it? And they said, a little lemon, salt, and pepper is the best way to eat it. So I did that, and it was so good. And now my whole family eats salmon. And every time we go out, I've tried to order it now because now I think that I like salmon. And I just don't like it when I order it out. And Brad says he's not ordering it yeah. because he just prefers my salmon over How any long restaurant. How do you cook it? I like my salmon to have a nice crisp on the top. Mm -hmm. And so obviously you cook it enough for that fish to be done. Yeah. But I, I like to cook it where it's nice and crispy on top. Um, and that's, that's my favorite way well, to have it. Well, y'all always tell me, no, Mama, don't overcook things because you I have can, a tendency to do you that. You can overcook and until you kind of get used to it and know, you can kind of break it apart and see if it's nice and flaky and not quite, you know, raw pink on the inside. So how many minutes would you say? I don't know. It depends on the Three, size four, of the salmon. Ma, you're the one that wants <laughs> to know how many teaspoons, how many minutes. <laughs> You know, it really depends on the size of the salmon. If it's just a normal size, then, uh -huh. you know, maybe four or five minutes on each side, something like yeah. that. But okay. anyway, this has been a great show. I've enjoyed yes. hearing from yes. our guest on just encouraging us on how to live in wholeness. Yeah. And in our next last half hour, um, you're going to actually be talking to me. I'm going to be giving some tips in the last half hour of just encouraging you on how to live a healthier lifestyle. Um so yeah, I'm, I'm going to be asking that. the questions, aren't I? Yes. 
So what do we want people to do? We want people to go get on Facebook, um, go to our site, Nightline Live with Mary and Tony on Facebook, or go to WGGS TV on Facebook, or go to YouTube. Uh, subscribe to WGGS's YouTube, and you can watch it live there, or go back and watch right. it again later. And if you have questions from what we're discussing, then go on the Facebook yes. page and write your question but and share it. Share yes. the live feed. So what do you have there? You know what? I've got somebody's called in uh, having health problems and somebody's calling in here for a marriage to be restored and healed. And uh, pray for somebody that uh, has a tumor and uh, wants that taken care of and believing in the power of God. What you got? Well, I've got a few. Someone who has family in the hospital, um, someone dealing with some mental issues, mm -hmm. um, family needing a miracle in their finances. Yes. Every week we get so many calls and we appreciate yes. our prayer partners that are back there to take the calls and Amen. pray. So um, we're just going to pray together and believe for wholeness that each one of these people will Thank be you, living Jesus. in wholeness. Father, we thank, thank you, you right now for the viewers that are watching. We ask, Father, that yes. you would meet the need of each and every one of them, Father, so that they can walk and live in wholeness in every area of their body and their physical body and their spirit and their mind. And we thank you, Father, for the plans that you have for them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.